silent. Or not. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have an excuse. Go on. Yeah, you're fine. Anushka was brain dead last session is what happens. Um, <laughs> again, I was so ready to just blast Anushka with a trap and be like, well, that's why that's why she's not talking right now, because she's unconscious. Then there you go. No. She's in a lot of physical pain. That did not happen, unfortunately. What trap would that have been? Just like five of them going off at once? I don't know, one with dipped in toxin. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. It's a story. Don't question it. That's right, Fork. Okay. So, uh, I believe we started with Renane and Rodra having a conversation. Um, privately, mind you, very important detail as he returns a certain object. Uh, Indeed. After uh, their conversation, she uh, decides that she is going to accompany us. At least for the foreseeable future. I don't know if it's like a permanent thing or a short-term thing. I don't know. It's up to her. She's making her own life decisions. Uh, I believe Brendan assisted her in sending a message to Malcolm. Crash is going to hate yeah. me, but I did actually remember his name was Malcolm because I did the Malcolm in the Middle theme song in my head. <laughs> Anyways, besides that. Go uh, on. <laughs> Moving swiftly onward, uh, after they got back, and that happened, um, we uh, talked about the arrow that was shot into a tree that had a note. Um, can't remember the exact wording. I think it was, I think it was turn back or face hell. Trent. Yeah. Nice, simple, and to the point. <laughs> Get the fuck out of Dodge. Um, we promptly ignored that. Uh, as we started to travel northward, being very cautious of uh, traps. It was north plus a direction, but I can't remember if it was east or west. One of those. I want to say was, west. This was north and west, correct. North and west, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, ca very, very cautiously, following O's real-life military advice of how to like set up like a, like a movement position in this case, and not get completely screwed over. Uh, we set off several different traps and found several traps that weren't set off, and we investigated them after Oriana did really bad at making sure they didn't go off. But at the very least, she didn't take damage. So, um, through a few different, uh, I can't remember what came up of investigating the traps, if anything, really. Um, but while traveling, we did do some perception or investigation checks. I think maybe a combination of those two. Uh, and eventually ended up finding the trials, which is what we were heading north to find in the first place. Or northwest to find in the first place. Uh, upon getting there, there is a uh, kind of gateway, doorway, kind of appearing uh, set of brambles. And about like a dozen or ten to a dozen burnt corpses with one of them holding a flower. A very specific stylized kind of looking flower, which is very odd because it's like a 3D thing. Um, as well as a uh, nervous individual that was trying to find pretty much anything on them. Downside is they're completely scorched and metal on them was turned to slag, so there wasn't really anything to find. Uh, after approaching a bit cautiously, uh, we discovered that her name was Ritsi. And then uh, to the people that were here beforehand... Uh, they remember mm. that name, meaning outsider. <laughs> so basically, this person is just it's like a slur. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But she's just like, ah, eh, it's just a name. It's like, all right, fair enough. Um, it's, Brendan... all, it's, it's like calling someone gaijin or something in Japan. You know, it just means like a negative way to say like foreigner, or outsider, or someone. Checks out. That makes sense. Constantly oh, referred to sense. as that person. That bitch. Yeah. Oof. Uh, they were very shy and meek, but. They're willing to talk. Mind you, only in Nevros, but I think pretty much all of us actually speak Nevros. Most of you, and I assume those translate for those that don't. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brendan did give her a different name that I, I, I think it's pronounced similar to Hell yeah, but I can't remember if that's right. Kalia? Kalia. Kalia, okay. I only remember the Hell yeah thing because Kirsty pointed that out. D-A-I-L-L-E-A. Th. Yeah. I had that written down. I'm not gonna remember how to pronounce that. <laughs> Kelly, 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 Kelly. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, small note about the traps. The traps activated. Uh, when they activated, they targeted people randomly. Uh, this was pointed out by Brendan's um 
of one of his patrons. Or, well, like, we assume. Out, out of game, it's one of his fucking patrons. Um, the guy at his head. Yeah, it was the John Thank you for Johnny I was struggling so much. <laughs> Just a uh, Johnny Zonder. A Johnny Zonder. The A-Man. <laughs> Boo on me for the, the, the A-Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, he also pointed out, or not he pointed out, we noticed that uh, it activates, when it activates, we hear like a whistling noise, and then someone gets it. Yeah. Yeah, which is very interesting. He, uh, Ajani did point out that there are some more complex versions of this trap, so we should be very careful. Uh, also, it's designed by Wood Elves initially because it's a really fucked up way of setting that up. <laughs> just like, it we attacks don't care who targets it indiscriminately, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty great. We don't care, just get the Oh, you're traveling out. through our woods with your kid and family? Oh, what a shame. Maybe you shouldn't fucking step in our woods. You know, now they're the core message. You did this. <laughs> no, now now you need to make another child. <laughs> it's it acts indiscriminately. Ugh. No Batman situation here, just a grieving anyways. Uh anyways. Uh it was Zal and Vasos. They were investigating the brambles while we were talking to uh Kaliak. I'm gonna say that wrong so many times. Um and uh, I believe it was Vaso who tried to interact with the flower, which it then did. proceeded to disintegrate into nothing. Uh, much like his it hopes did. and dreams at the current moments. Um, after we decided to sit down and have a bit of a rest, I don't think we got a full long rest, but I think we at least got a short rest. Yeah, I got a short rest, correct. Yeah. Uh, we set up some traps, we set up some perimeter uh, security and stuff, and uh, talked a bit. Um, different people talk about different things, uh, such as Mirka's backstory, which, um, boy howdy, is, was that kind of unexpected of such a kind person. Um, there was some conversation with Kelyak. Uh, I can't remember most of it, but I do remember there was her bringing up a food that her mother made. This will be relevant later. <laughs> it was, um, basically like a little rice ball, I believe. Um, sticky rice wrap, yeah. Sticky rice, thank you. Uh, I can't remember if anything else important happened during that segment. I don't think I've really anything done. Yeah, um, after a while, after it got dark, um, the Bramble Gateway, uh, activated. And with some observations, we noticed that the moon is a full moon, which shouldn't be. It's also in the wrong spot, and also we can kind of see the sun, so it's kind of like twilight time. Uh, which... Kind of just says, oh yeah, no, this is 100% face shit. Alright, so this is gonna be fun. Um, if you couldn't tell already by everything else that suggests it's face shit, here's some confirmation. Uh, Kelyuk, stand I, I am dutifully obliged as your guys' friend and GM to say, uh, in the lore expansion for this iteration, there are some details which you might believe it's fundamental that are now different. A paradigm shift as, oh, as uh, players. So... Uh, basically, you are equally in the same boat as your character in the sense of you think you know stuff. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Have fun with that. We've heard Thanks. the rumors. You've heard all the meta knowledge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The meta knowledge we have is just fairy tales that are passed down, which may or may not be correct. Bingo! Actually, I, I think I remember you, Crash, you bringing up there's just like different like devils could have different archetypes of. Technically, this could be a devil thing. It'd just be a very specific one. Their woodsy devil is an archetype, correct? Yeah. Hmm. So, like, who knows? We'll find out later. <laughs> Maybe. Nah. Who knows? I believe uh, next week, kids. I believe Suya described Lyco as a fairy. <clears throat> yeah. So you, you have. It's that's probably the best source you're gonna get for the situation. Yeah. Pardon the pun. Yeah. It's a pretty fair assumption. I'm gonna um, kill you first. <laughs> it was the only way to say the sentence, okay? I didn't even mean to make Ooh. a joke. Thank up. you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal my bit. Damn, you, my you bit. took... Damn, you took everything. You took everything from... <laughs> uh, Alright, keep, keep going. Uh, I think that's... Oh, wait, no. Um, Kiliak stands up seemingly almost possessed in a way and runs to the portal. And then following behind them is a vagrant. Following behind them is a PCs. Uh, one important note is, uh, well, two different notes. First note is the people we left behind, the animals. We left Lambert, Amber, Kasai, uh, Rodra, which I thought I would forget, and Horn. 
Um, Good job. Yeah, surprise. Uh, as well as Brendan, before he went in, told Lambert, "Hey, watch out! If you meet an Eldrin woman who's asking about stones, you don't know me." Oh, that's suspicious. <laughs> to, to which Lambert just suspicious. blinked at that, and then he was just like. Don't worry about it. Well. we'll put a pin in it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to and we'll come back to that one. Just like talking to Orion about that spy ship. But that's the size of the point. <laughs> I thought I was using it <gasps> as a distraction. As, I as, forgot about that. As a legal representative of Oh, I have to make a claim, so <laughs> Oh, I'm making that down before I forget again. I love your speech for me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway. Shaderous swine. Boink. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> My oh wait, we're not gonna bore this session because Amber said bye. I'm wasting time that we pre desperately need it. Anyways, I'm not saying you're desperately needed. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I don't know. You guys, that's, that's the point of D and D. Surprise me. Uh, so, so. Yes. one last detail that I think we glossed over a little bit is that she knew the story yeah. of the two dragons, the the golden standard, and I forget the red action annihilator. Annihilator. She knew that story very well, which surprised me. Yeah, especially after she described it of being like a story that's been mostly forgotten. Yes, many never was tries to forgotten it. Yeah. It was a story that not many cared to tell again, and as such, it within only a mere couple generations, it was being lost to the annals of history. Very odd. Anyways, uh, we go into a portal. We are met with a, I believe it was described as. Uh, something akin to a lodge in general appearance. Yeah, like a fancy lodge. A fancy lodge. Um, massive table, covered in foods, drinks from just fucking all over the joint. Uh, as well as writing, specifically in Sylvan, which is basically That's confirming funny. it's probably a fairy. Uh, if you but wouldn't that be a big mind fuck if it wasn't, though? Oh, God. Cool. It, it's just like something God, from a boy so that's just like, oh, I'm gonna fuck with that. That'd so be hard. so good. That would be so good. Anyway. Let's throw some Sylvan graffiti up here. Um, it said, uh, get what you want and head deeper. Uh, which, before we start grabbing things, we did see Kaliak uh, walking through the gate on the other side, seemingly very quickly determining what she wanted, uh, which was the food that uh, was described earlier. the Her favorite thing of her family. Or her mother, I should say. Um, after we kind of interpreted the Sylvan writing, we figured uh, our interpretation of it is well, it's supposed to be interpretive. It's what... It's a manifestation of what you desire, what you want in life. Which, a whole bunch of people had different things. There were some really interesting ones with, um... Here's, like, a chalice. I'm gonna dump it out, because I don't want the fancy shit in life. Da -da -da, kind of things. Uh, Speaking of that, why don't the two of you that were absent last session describe... What oh, would your character have brought to the door? Anushka and D. What would, would your characters have brought to the door? You guys already told it to me. Share it with the class. You wanna go first, Dorky? <laughs> uh, so I was thinking deep with uh she would bring like alcohol. <laughs> oh. Um because it's like you. <laughs> Yeah, it, when you drink it, it makes you all loose and like it makes you like a bit more freer or um more true to yourself. And like deep she's more like locked up and she mm. doesn't she, I feel like uh, with alcohol she's more in tune with her feelings and can become more free you have less inhibition oh. so maybe the next time you guys are in town buy D to drink yeah we'll just get absolutely <laughs> slow or, or my bad. each of you buy D to drink which will thus be accomplish yeah. the objective so that's what D wanted what about Anushka? Um, so Anushka was going to pick, like, basically just a really large bowl of, like, homemade stew. With, like, you know, lots of different meats. Definitely, like, stewed potato. Not not stewed potato. Stewed mush. Do stewed sausage. Potato? Yeah, it does have potato. That's not the word I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> it does have potatoes in it. And then, like, lots of different vegetables, meats, that kind of mm. thing. Just, Comfort you food. know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's how I described it. Yeah, just proper like comfort food—the thing that like you would feed an entire family, kind of, kind of deal. Um, I can go and for that right now. That's for certain. Oh, I know, right? Soon, as, soon as I came up with that, I was just like, oh my god, actually. 
D&D. Yep, yep, makes me hungry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then... <laughs> and I'll probably have some, like, freshly squeezed juice or something like that, just, like, extra, like, cranberry or raspberry or something. And there you all have it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, some sourdough bread as well to go with it for dipping in the gravy. <laughs> Very important. Very important. It's extremely important. <laughs> What oh, did your fellow players... Well, they shared with the class. Let's turn the table. <laughs> what did you guys pick? Go on. Uh, I'll go first, things I was the first to enter the room. Uh, I <clears throat> grabbed... Uh, Brendan grabbed a handful of elderberries, put them on his plate, and walked through the door. That was it. Uh, nice and simple. Bundle. Mm -hmm. Nice and simple. If we're going by the order of who went in, I guess next would be would be Sajar. <laughs> yes. Sajar picked some uh, campfire chicken, you know, plain, charcoal, and some uh, wellspring tea. Specific type of tea from a specific part of the world. Nice stuff. Very refreshing. Yeah. Next would be Oriana. Uh, I think two different things were suggested. I think I went with just an apple, but could I have also grabbed apple and cascus? Because God yes, yes, know. you, yes, you, yes, you could have. Yes, <laughs> okay. cascus. To those of you who don't know, is sort of like a minty, chewy plant, like something you would gnaw on. That's just leaves. Uh, it gives you caffeine, so it's leaf gum, caf <laughs> caffeinated leaf gum, <laughs> commonly used amongst teachers, soldiers, guardsmen. Students, anyone, anyone that needs caffeine to operate in their life. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to make that plant a reality. It also tastes good. It's very minty. Mm -hmm. So you grab apple and cascus. Next is Silas. Silas grabbed a bit of sort of everything that was there that um, everyone else took, um, as well as anything they didn't recognize in the slightest. Which I believe he said was, um, I can't remember the exact word for it. Was it, like it was like a very, it was like a like a dessert quiche. Yeah. Filled with different sweet, uh, I was gonna say accessories. I guess that's sort of what they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you don't know where it's from, but it looks delicious. <laughs> so I'm gonna find out later. And then that leaves Redain. Yep. Am I? Yeah, I am unmuted. He grabbed the fanciest goblet he could find filled with the most exquisite wine available, but then dumped the wine before heading in. After everyone had, <laughs> had left by that point. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think that about does it for the recap, but you guys tell me, is there anything else you guys want to detail? Any uh, important tidbits? Hold on, why did a uh, cursey go, hmm? No, I was thinking of decent what I just wrote there, but I mean, I've just read it, uh, so like, eh. Gotcha. Yeah, if not, have then... Little... Yeah, yeah. If not, then let's get into it, shall we? We. We, we. We, we, but still. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna do it for much. Anyways, so... <laughs> So, Brendan is the first one in. I will move you guys to the map, but know that you guys aren't actually there yet. Give it, I don't know, a little bit. I'll start saying when people enter in stages. Brendan, I gave you a little bit of a description prior to, uh, well, last week, prior to mm -hmm. entering. Yes, you did. Da -da -da. Okay. Here we are. Uh... For being the first one into the second trial, yes, the first one was a trial. For being the first one into the second trial, gain an inspiration. I already have one. Get fucking well, get get, Why do you guys do this to me? The only time we hoard them is when it's inconvenient. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, okay. I am a veteran Skyrim oh, player. I hold Very every resource I can. Very well. So, Jean, do you have an inspiration? Please don't say you do. I do not. Take an inspiration. There. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyways. <laughs> so, 
I will describe it aloud to all of you, so that way you guys know what the place looks like when your character eventually gets here. But first one to see it is Brendan. Uh, shortly after will be Sajar, because you guys went in pretty like, successively after one another. But as you enter into this next plane, this next place, you are greeted by a perfectly flat, grassy field. The grass itself goes up to uh, halfway between your foot and your knee. Not, you know, difficult to tr uh, trample through. But you're inside what appears to be a greenhouse of some sort. There are glass panels, not panes, there's a difference, that form the walls as well as the ceiling held together by stone frames that they're embedded into. The stone walls themselves also comprise the front and back walls. Outside the, uh, the greenhouse itself, the glass greenhouse itself, appears to be a forest. Not too dissimilar from where you guys had first entered. A forest in the north. It's not the same place. There's no margin claw or margin talon mountains out in the distance for you to uh, use as landmark to identify with. No. Also in this room, Opposite from you, furthest, is a door like the one that is open, the one that you've stepped through. It looks similar, if not the exact same, as the previous door you guys had successfully passed through. A door with no handles, a thin gap in between, not that you could see through it, but enough to denote that there is a break point there. In between you and the door is a large table. Not as large as the one you just saw, though. And it doesn't look as well-crafted. In fact, it doesn't look crafted at all. It, by all accounts, looks more akin to a large root that has jabbed up out of the ground and made this sort of flat plane crest and sinks back into the ground. Upon that table... There is no plates, dishes, or anything, but there is a single candle holder with a candle on it. Uh, the candle is not lit. You are the first one in. Where was Kelly's? Oh, Kelly's dish is to, off to your right. There. I'll make a little, make a tiny little circle. Tiny circle. Boom. Tiny circle. There you go. I'm gonna keep my plate with me and step like slowly approach the table. Keeping an eye out for like if there's writing or anything that appears or if a voice appears or if there's anything written like over that door. Uh, roll me perception. As you are walking, nothing particularly strikes. You could hear the wind howling outside, but it doesn't ever make its way in here. Uh, but that means out of 24 perception. As you are walking, as I just described, there's wind coasting outside, you know, blowing through tree branch and bushel and so on. But you're inside a not a vacuum, but an enclosed space, so no wind finds its way through here. But, but, you notice that there are certain parts of the grass in here that are affected by the wind, but only certain parts of the room, not anywhere else. Not even the, the ground you're stepping on, no wind affecting that grass. You, you're not feeling any wind whatsoever. But there are parts that are. Can I tell where they are and if they make a pattern? Certainly. Um, here, let me just do this. Yeah. Pew! Pew! You got a good roll. Those segments there. Okay. I'll approach the one on the left. You go over... 
Uh, see if I just see if I can detect anything with it. Roll me investigation. Ooh. Or nature. I, either one. I, I think those. I think that that's a. Ooh, or survival. I think survival would also be applicable. Survival. Nature investigate. Oh, no, my investigation. I actually have proficiency in. Well, of course, that makes sense. <laughs> you got one well on the first one, less on the second one. You begin looking at it, trying to determine what what is causing this, the source of this. You put your hand over the grass and try to feel if there's, like, some weird vent that's hitting 